this week inside the board exam prep academy we're on week six so it's three months of board exam preparation for dental hygiene students and dental assisting students but don't worry you can sign up anytime because all the videos have been recorded they're posted inside the course right away you have the powerpoints everything so you can learn at your own pace if you decide you don't want to follow along with us but if you are following along this week is week six and we're going over microbiology and histology so we go over a powerpoint lecture first and and then mock exams and case studies in our next class. So we have two classes a week for about 45 minutes, sometimes an hour, depending on questions. And they're all recorded if you cannot attend live. So in this video, we're going to go over some of the questions that we have gone over inside the course because microbiology and histology, I don't know about you guys, but it's boring. It's not exciting. I find this is one of the harder classes for most students. So let's go through some of the mock exam questions, see how you do, feel free to pause Pause the video at any time if you need to take more time answering them okay so let me share my screen this is our case studies and micro um, PowerPoint Google slide I'm just going to go over a few questions with you so can everybody see my screen okay is this good Alrighty, so I will read the question and then you guys can think about the answer. So a patient presents with symptoms of a swollen, painful, and red gum. Upon examination, you notice a collection of pus near the affected tooth. Which of the following conditions, or sorry, which of the following microorganisms is most likely responsible for this condition? Would you pick A, B, C, or D? So I'll give you guys a moment to think about that and then I'll go over to the next slide, but feel free to pause the video if you need more time. These are tricky ones and I'm going to talk a little bit too. So even as you're going through this question, what does a swollen, painful and red gum tell you? That's not normal, right? We don't like that. But then also, what does pus mean towards an affected tooth. When we see pus, that's really concerning, right? Does that mean infection? So that might help you answer this question. So if something's causing an infection, what microorganism would likely cause that? We talk about this all inside our class first. So we have a lecture PowerPoint and then we go over the mock exam questions. So if you were at our class or if you've al already studied microbiology, you'd be able to answer this. But even if you have and you don't know this question, that tells you to go back and study it again. So let's go through it together here. So the answer is Staphylococcus aureus. So sorry, I'm probably not pronouncing these properly, but let me explain the rationale to you. The presence of a swollen, painful, and red gum with pus that suggests an infection commonly known as an abscess. Among the options provided, um, strep, strep, I, oh my gosh, I think I said it better the first time. Staphylococcus aureus? <laughs> They're hard to say, you guys. I'm sorry. They're hard to say. Um, is most likely the organism responsible for this condition. So even if you didn't know the answer, let me go through them with you. So A, what is Streptococcus mutans a part of? That's typically going to be cavities. So that can't be the right answer. What about P. gingivalis? So I'm kind of making that into a short form. So what about a P. gingivalis? That's either gingivitis or perio depending on what else is present. Um, Candidia albicans, think about that. So none of those make sense because a fungal infection has nothing to do with an abscess. So the best answer is going to be D. So how did you guys do with that one? Let's move on to the next one here. A patient complains of persistent bad breath and yellowish deposits on the back of the tongue. Microscopic examination reveals the presence of gram-negative anaerobic bacteria. Which of the following microorganisms is most likely responsible for this condition? Would you say A, B, C, or D? And let me help you with this one a bit too. Do you guys remember gram-negative anaerobic bacteria? Is that oxygen-loving or oxygen-hating? What about what does the stain on a slide show for gram-negative? Is it purple or blue? Is it red or pink? That might not be part of the question, but you should always be thinking about 
parts of the question and if you know what they entail, because that might help you with another question. This is the time to think about these things, because if you don't know, you can stop and go back and study that. My students inside the course have this full PowerPoint lecture. So if they're going through these mock exam questions on their own and they go, oh my goodness, I don't remember, they know exactly what PowerPoint to go back to to study that and then they can come back here and they would know the answer. So what do you guys think? What do you think the answer is? Feel free to pause the video if you need more time. So the answer is treponemia denticola. <laughs> I'm probably mispronouncing that one too. But let me give you the rationale of that. So the symptoms of persistent bad breath and yellowish deposits on the back of the tongue are consistent with a condition known as halitosis. You probably figured that out. But among the options provided, this is the only one which is a gram-negative anaerobic bacteria commonly associated with halitosis. Again, if you weren't sure, do process of elimination here. A has to do with cavities. Um, this one I can't pronounce. C, that could have to do with perio because actinomyces is typically associated with perio, even if you didn't know the second one. And D, maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, but would that have to do with gram-negative anaerobic bacteria? No. So then you know B is the correct answer. So how are you guys doing with those so far? Histology and microbiology is tricky. So if you need more mock exam practice and case studies, we have them all inside the VIP Board Exam Prep Academy. I help you with it every step of the way. So you have PowerPoints and then you have mock exam practice. You even have extra mock exam practice too that don't necessarily go with the PowerPoints that I'm teaching you, but you still have to know for the board exam. So there's never any stone left unturned. But you don't learn too much. You only learn what you have to know for the board exam. So it's perfect because time goes by so fast. You all don't have unlimited time. You need focused studying. So if you need more mock exam questions, let me know. Definitely look inside the VIP Board Exam Prep Academy package. You can see that right on the main website at www.dentalwell.com. Of course, let me know if any questions you guys, okay? And if you want to have access to a little bit more I do have a Facebook group, um, Dental L Network. You can look that up. Feel free to join. And I have new videos every Monday and Thursdays on YouTube. I think you guys like these mock exam questions, so I'm going to keep doing those. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you did well, and I'll see you guys in the next one.